Hey everyone, today we're going to start solving systems of equations that contain both linear and quadratic equations. So much like all of the systems that we've been doing already, the solution to one of these systems is the ordered pair that satisfies both equations. And remember, when I say ordered pair, what I'm talking about is a coordinate point, x comma y. So speaking of coordinates, that second sentence on there is another way of thinking of a solution. The point or points where the line and the parabola intersect. So with that definition, let's go ahead and jump into our first example. I have the system containing the quadratic equation y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, and the linear equation, y equals 2x minus 3. So what we're looking for is the ordered pair that will satisfy both of these equations, or in other words, we're looking for the ordered pair, or pairs, where the line and the parabola intersect. Okay, so I have a few options when it comes to solving. Again, much like the systems that we've already been doing, you can solve by substitution or you can solve by elimination. So I am gonna give you examples of each type, but for now, let's start with substitution. So what I mean by substitution is see how both equations are set up as y equals an expression, y equals an expression. That means that I can take one of these expressions. So let's say that top one, I can take that entire expression, and since I know that that pink part is equal to y, that means anytime I see a y, I can replace it with that expression. So I'm going to replace this y with that highlighted expression. So this turns into x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 2x minus 3. Okay, so now our job is to solve this resulting equation. We need to solve this equation. But because of this term right here, that very first term, because it's squared, this is a quadratic equation. So when it comes to quadratics, we again, we have options when it comes to solving. If at all possible, we want to factor. That's probably going to be the easiest one. If for some reason this expression is not factorable, we could always use the quadratic equation, or sorry, quadratic formula, or we can use completing the square. But no matter what method we pick, we do need this to be equal to zero. And right now, it does not equal zero. So let's go ahead and fix that. So let's subtract 2x. That way I know for sure it will cancel. But whatever I do on the right side, I also have to do on the left side of the equal sign. So we are also going to subtract 2x. And notice how I'm already lining it up with the term that it goes with. Okay, and then that minus 3 on the right side, I'm going to cancel it out by adding 3. And whatever you do on the right, have to do on the left. So we're going to add 3. Okay, so let's see what happens. That x squared term, there's nothing underneath. So that's just going to stay x squared. Okay, this term right here, negative 2 minus 2, that gives me negative 4x. Okay, then I have negative 3 plus 3. So it just so happens with this one that it cancels out the constants is equal to, then because everything is canceled out on the right, just equals 0. Okay, now I can begin factoring. Now, this one doesn't have a C term like we traditionally see, but that actually makes our job easier here because what I can do is go for a greatest common factor. What's the biggest thing that I can divide both of these terms by? So the obvious thing should be they both have x's. So I know I can divide by x, pull that to the outside, and that would leave me with x minus 4. And this expression is still equal to 0. OK, 
okay, now that I have it factored, it is factored, we're gonna get each of these factors and we're gonna set them equal to zero. So if I have x set it equal to zero, well, that's awesome. I don't have any work to do. It's already equal to a number. And now let's do the other one, x minus four equal to zero. Have to do some work here, but it's not very much. Just add four to both sides. So x is equal to four. So what we have found is two different x values that should work with our system. But remember, our solution to the system is an ordered pair. So it's not two x's, it should be x comma y. And right now, all we have is two x's. So what we need to do is go back and find y values to pair up with each one of these x's. How we're gonna do that is, let's go back to our original system. I have two equations to choose from. Let's get our x value and plug it into one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one you choose, either one will get you the correct answer, but it's always gonna be easier to use the linear equation. So y equals two x minus three, we're gonna plug in zero, and we're gonna plug in the four from here. Okay, so y equals two x minus three, only we're gonna plug in zero. So that gives me y equals negative three. Okay, now we need to do the same thing with the other one. Y equals two x minus three, only we're gonna plug in four. which gives me eight minus three is five. Okay, so my solutions are ordered pairs. I have to pair up each X with a Y. So it goes with the one that you plugged in. So this X pairs up with that Y, which gives me the ordered pair zero comma negative three. Then here X goes with y, so I get the ordered pair four comma five. Both of these count as solutions to my system. That means that if I really wanted to double check my work, I can plug in zero for x, negative three for y, and that should come out true. And I should also be able to plug in four for x and five for y, and that should come out true for both of these equations. So this is actually really interesting to see when you graph it. Remember that quadratics are parabolas and linear are line. So let me show you. I actually already have this graphed right next to it. This is what it looks like. Our first quadratic is there graphed in red. So that's our curved parabola. Then our second is our line. That's the blue line going straight through. So our solutions are where they cross. Let's take a closer look at it. So my first intersection that I see is right here and that's the point zero, negative three. And it also intersects up here and that's the point four comma five. So if you take a look at the solutions that we found, well, Look at that, they're exactly the same, zero, negative three, and four and five. So obviously the graphing method is always gonna be easier. We all have access to a graphing calculator online, but there are benefits of knowing how to do this algebraically. Okay, let's look at our next example. So this time I have the system consisting of the quadratic equation y equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 1, and y equals negative 2x plus 2. So we can continue doing that substitution method, but I wanted to show you that elimination will also work. Okay, so the rule of doing the elimination method is that everything has to be lined up. So y's are aligned with y's, equal sign with equal sign, Here's where we run into our first problem. 
This is x squared, and this is just regular x. I know they're the same letter, but they are not the same term because of that little exponent. But I do have an x term over here, so if I could kind of rearrange my equations, I could make them line up. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it over here to the side. That first quadratic, I'm just going to rewrite it as is. Okay, but the second equation, that linear, I'm going to write it in a way that the terms will line up. So the y part was not the problem. The y equals can stay the same. But this next part here, negative 2x, I need to put it underneath the x term. So see how I skipped x squared? And I went straight to the x term and lined it up. And then the plus 2 goes underneath the constant, just like that. Okay, so now everything is lined up. If you want to, you could put a placeholder here and put 0x squared, but you don't have to do that. So let's perform our elimination, and we're going to do that by subtracting. Okay, and once you do this, y minus y, that's the variable that just got eliminated. That becomes 0, is equal to negative x squared minus well, nothing, so it's going to stay negative x squared. Then I have negative 4 minus negative 2. Remember that double negative makes that become a positive sign? So that's negative 2x. And then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Okay, so now I want to solve this resulting quadratic equation. So I am going to continue to factor this if possible. And one thing that will make that possible is that if this first a term was not negative. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch sides, which means that this negative x, I would add it to both sides. In fact, I should probably write this down so we don't get confused. I would add 2x. It would cancel from this side, but it would turn positive on the left side. Same thing with this term. And same thing with that last term. And this helps us because now everything is positive. x squared plus 2x plus 1 now equals 0. So see how everything just kind of treated places? So now let's factor that quadratic equation that I have. So what I'm looking for here is a pair of factors that multiplies to 1 but adds up to 2. So fortunately for us, this is a pretty easy one. Because the only way to get 1 by multiplying is 1 times 1. And when you add those together, 1 plus 1 is 2. So those are our factors right away. This can be rewritten as x plus 1 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now I would set the factors both equal to 0. So x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract the 1. So x is equal to negative 1. Then I would do the same thing to the other factor. But again, in this case, they happen to be both the same factor. So why am I going to do the work all over again when it's the same thing? So this one only has one x value. So now all I got to do is go back and find a y value to match with that x. So I'm going to go back to my original system. Pick one in my equations, and I'm going to use this one. It's a lot easier. And we're going to substitute the negative 1 that we just found into that spot. So y equals negative 2. Plug in our negative 1 plus 2. Okay. 
Okay, so this gives me y equals positive 2 plus 2, which is y equals 4. Okay, so those values go together. Here's my x and here's my y as an ordered pair. So negative 1 comma 4. That is the solution to this system here. So again, I have a graph that goes with this system. That red one there is the parabola. That's our quadratic equation. This blue one is the line. So if you take a look at it, it's only crossing at one point. I know it's kind of hard to see. It looks like it's overlapping for a little bit, for a while, but it really only overlaps at that point, which is negative one, four. So that's exactly what we got, negative one, four. Okay, and then I have one last example for us. y equals x squared minus 2x plus 4, and y equals x minus 1. I'm going to go back to the substitution method. So I noticed that both of them are set up for y. So I can plug in this expression into this y here. And that would give me x squared minus 2x plus 4 is equal to x minus 1. Now we know from before that we want this to equal to 0. So we're going to subtract x and add 1 to both sides. So this cancels out here. And I'm left with x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0. Okay, now that's a quadratic equation that I'm going to try to factor. Do my little t. I need numbers that multiply to 5 but add up to negative 3. So I could either do 1 times 5, and that's about it. But if you add those together, that's 6. Okay, so what if I did something negative? Well, that's 4. If I did the other one, negative 4. What if they're both negative? Negative 6. So no matter how I rearrange it, I was never able to get it to equal negative 3. So that means that this quadratic equation is not factorable. Factoring is not going to work. So luckily, we do have another option. Let's use a quadratic formula. So quadratic formula, that's the one. I don't know if your teachers ever taught you this way, but I learned it with the Pop Goes the Weasel song. So x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We're going to do that. So x equals negative b, but in our case, b is negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. a is the invisible 1 in the front, and c is positive 5. all over 2a. Okay, so let's start doing this math. I have that double negative in the front. It's going to make that a positive 3, plus or minus. This would be... Sorry, I am just trying to do this in my head. So this is 9. 4 times 1 is 4, times 5 is 20. 9 minus 20 is negative 11. All over 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so there's something super important about what we just did. So what we just found is this part right here. What's inside that radical is negative. I have a negative 11 inside there. So 
that's not normally a problem. Like you're still going to be able to get a solution, but what it turns into is 3 plus or minus square root of 11. And then we write i because i is the square root of negative 1. So that means that this system or this quadratic equation doesn't have any real solutions. It has imaginary solutions because of that i, because of this negative inside the square root. It only has imaginary solutions. It doesn't have any real. And for our graphing, when we look at our xy coordinate plane, that's only made up of real numbers. So this system has no real solutions. Okay, so I think this makes more sense when you look at the picture. So here is that same system on a graph. So see that? The parabola is up here and then here's the line. There is no place where they touch, at least not on the real number line. So all of these numbers here are real. Imaginary numbers kind of come forward out of the screen. So if you were to be able to see the imaginary numbers, then it would cross. But since we cannot see imaginary numbers with our naked eye, we're going to say that there's no real solutions. Okay, guys, those are the three types that you're going to get when you're doing linear quadratic systems. That's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye.